Hi, Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of American and Germany. And today I have here from Teeling, the second of the series from Brabazon bottling. And this was in the port casks. Now, there originally was the series number one, which was in the sherry cask. You notice the inverted color logos because this bottle was dark. And this bottle is glass and translucent. So they actually just changed the colors of the bottles as well as of, of the packaging. So side by side real quick. And you can see that. All right, good. Now, moving on. What we have here is series number two. Um, over here in Germany, it's 68 euros, which translates to about 73, 75 dollars. The official um, price should be 78 euros, which would be about 85 euros. Available in Ireland on the Benelux, Benelux um, which would be the Netherlands, Luxembourg, and um, also Belgium, France, Germany, Switzerland, Russia, Australia, weird, and selected countries of Asia. Which means, poor USA, sorry, you'll never see this bottle, just like you never saw the first bottle either. Now, um, a second thing I have here, I'm going to pour into my Glencon, and I'm going to pour something into this weird-looking glass, which is now called the... T-U-A-T-H, Tuath, Irish Whiskey Glass. This is the official whiskey glass of Ireland. Um, what I really, really like, I don't know if you can see this or not, is this shape. I think it looks like the cruiser of Star Wars. Darth Vader is going to come to get you. All right. Um, now, I'm going to nose both of them. Um, the glass looks a little taller. There's a little bit, it's a little bit wider. The base, it's not really where I can go, hey, it's great. I love these things. You can, you, can, you can drop them and they don't break. I'm not going to drop this. This looks very, very, very brittle here, that area. Do you see that little indentation here? That looks like it's just going to go knack and it's going to die very, very quickly. This, as I said, you can drop and nothing's going to happen. All right, so now... Brabazon series number two. First of all, Brabazon was a, they were a family that started the new market in Dublin, outside the walls of Dublin in the 17th century. They changed this trading square into a bustling um, industrial area where we had Guinness and you had Teeling and you had Powers and you had like dozens of other companies actually producing things and not just whiskey because within the walls of Dublin, UK, as of the king, the queen back then, I don't know, I think it was the king of the 17th century, actually governed, but outside of the walls, there was liberty, freedom to do certain things that you couldn't do before. And that's why it's still called today um, the spirit of liberty. And that's why Teeling gave it, um, itself that name, yeah, the spirit of liberty, because of the freedom they now have. All right, so what we have here is a very unique mash bill, which I really can't say because it's 100% um, malted barley as far as I'm concerned. It is called a single malt. And um, that's not what makes it important. What makes it important and unique is the cask that we use. 10% of the whiskey in this bottle were um, stored in first fill bourbon or bourbon. I'm sorry, I didn't see read first fill. Bourbon cask for 10 years. And then for two years in tawny port cask between 2015 to 2017. Nothing special. So a nice little finish. But then 12.5 of, of the whiskey in here percent was stored in white port casks that were filled up with single malt in the year 2005 and respectively 12.5% of the white port casks that were filled up in the year 2012. So, I'm um, 2002, I'm sorry. So that means we have 12-year-old and we have 15-year-old whiskey that has been in white port casks. Woo! So we have a total now of 35%. The other 65%, 20% was in ruby port from the year 2009, 20% was in ruby port from the year 2007, and 25% was in ruby port from the year 2001. 
amazing. I have a little infographic. You can take a look at that. You can see how the Teeling actually divided it up and showed me I didn't make these numbers up. So there's 8-year-old, there's 10-year-old, and there's 16-year-old single malt whiskey in here. Now, my big problem is I like port. I've drank, I've had um, Tawny Port that's been 25 years old. I was in um, Lisbon and we went down in this nice little club and it was on the, on the, on the menu and I was like, oh, 25-year-old Tawny Port. A little dram, 2CL, I don't know, it was 10 euros. And I went, I want to try that. That's so cool. Um, white port normally is not stored in whiskey uh, and in any type of wood barrels, as far as I know. And ruby port, the main difference is it's normally not stored in any type of wooden barrels. They do have these tanks, like 20,000 liter tanks, where we put the port wine in there each year. And you let it set and you let it just age for two to three years and then you put it and you fill it up as maybe ruby and then some of that you use then as a tawny and so there are very 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 few um port wines that are called ruby that have ever seen a pipe a port pipe is a very big not a not a cherry cherry cask but a port pipe it's a special size have ever seen those and so a ruby port um, cask uh, from the year 2009, 2007, and 2001 is a very special thing. But somehow, Teeling founded 2015, which means we have to go back to Cooley, um, which actually did this and filled these things and had this experiment actually going back then. Thank you very much, Jack Teeling, for your um, vision to have something back then that you're going to actually be able to now serve and produce and to actually sell now in the year, year 2017. My batch was filled up in the year 2017, August. As I said, I hope I mentioned it, 12,500 bottles worldwide. That's it. Just like its companion here from series number one, also just 12,500 barrels or bottles total. So let's try this. On the nose, it's very, very fruity. And now over here to the Tulof or Tuaf, Tuaf glass. It's not the same nosy experience. This, my Glen Khan, it's so more, so much more funneled, directed, intensified, compressed. And here, I just don't get it. If I put my nose all the way in the glass. I do get a little bit more, but I have to go, you have the lip and then you have this bulge and you have to go over the bulge to get there. So they added something here basically and I do not like that. Even on the mouth, it's not really where I'm going to go great. I I prefer my Glen Khan. Sorry. So let's try this. Mmm. Wow, I love this. I gave it an A. This, wow, 49.5%. It's hot. It's spicy hot. It's alcohol hot. I wasn't expecting that. Wow. The port is present, but not really dominant. I had a um, single cask from Teeling, 14 years old, in a port um, cask. Oh, it was so good. I had like two weeks ago and I really was looking forward to this. I was like, hey, this is going to be almost the same. And it's not. Um, I think the white port casks, because, hey, how much wood did the white port see? Not at all. A ruby port, how much wood did the port see? Not that much either, apparently. And um, it really, really, really doesn't come through as I was expecting. Ah. My control whiskey of the day is a um, Tomatin 14-year-old um, port wood finish. So I had this before just to make my taste buds up and running. I'm not a great fan of the port finishes. Maybe that's my problem. I love my sherry finishes. I love my Bandera finishes. I actually had a Mozzatel, um wine finish, which I kind of liked and so on. But port so far has not been my thing, even though I love port wine. My wife and I were in Portugal, we visited Porto, we tried at the different places, I think we went to six different places, tried six different types of port wine. 
Every single one of them was just fantastic. A really, really nice thing. So, drinking here now from the Two Oath Irish, official Irish whiskey glass. First of all, I really don't know where to grab this thing. This doesn't really feel great. This doesn't feel great. My finger's too fat for that. Here, I'm not really sure. It's a little bit wider than here. This feels, this just feels like a better fit for my hands. So, I'm sorry. All right, it comes in. There's a little bit of fruity. It's, a, it's just, just a very simple, normal, hot Irish whiskey. The fruits kick in. I'm just gonna call it a apricot black cranberry jelly mixture. Then the alcohols kick back in, goes down. Then that black currant jelly kind, kind of comes back just a little bit. And then the alcohol gets hot again. And at the very, very end, there's a little bit of wood that's just been there too long. I'm so sorry. This has been a little bit too long in the cask for me. I'm really, really interesting to see how this um, other people have um, judged this. As I said, um. September 19th, available in England. I haven't found a single video online, not even from Teeling itself. They actually did for the series number one, they did a video about that. But for the series number two, they haven't done a video yet, at least when I'm doing this now in the middle of November. And so I might once again be the first person who's reviewed this online that I can find at Google or at YouTube. And um, oh, I'm gonna give it a C. I really wanted to like this. Um, I think in German I actually gave it a C minus. Uh, I did an unboxing video. All right, um, value for money, D. Um, 67 euros that I paid for, 68 euros. The official um, is 78, way too much. Sorry, people. Um, I actually bought two bottles of this. Um, so I have one stashed away. Um, I will have a one bottle of the Series 1, one bottle of the Series 2, and I think I'm going to do a bottle share with all three series or four. I don't know how many there are going to be in total when they're all finished with that. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of American and Germany. My question of the day is, which port finish whiskey do you like best? Or which whiskey, whiskey that has seen the inside of a port barrel do you like best? I'm going to have to say Teeling, single cask, port, 14-year-old. The entire 14-year-old years in the port um, cask, fantastic. This 3C minus, almost, not my thing. All right, thank you very much for watching. Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American and Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskey. And since this isn't coming to the States, it's rare and exotic, and I cannot find a video about it yet online. Thank you for watching Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. My videos are coming out. See ya. Bye-bye.